Hello everyone, this is Dr. Zaidi. Welcome to my YouTube channel ZTube. Today we are going to discuss methods of determining cost behavior. There are various methods of determining cost behavior. In this video, I'm going to discuss the five methods, industrial engineering approach, account analysis method, scatter plot, high-low method, and least square regression analysis. So industrial engineering approach, in the industrial engineering approach, we use time and motion studies. We use input output relationship. The reason is that, that we may not have a past data available. Either it's a brand new pr product that we are producing or we have made a significant changes in the product that the data from the past is not reliable. So we need new information. So we use industrial engineers who have a business background to estimate the cost of the product. So what we do is we take direct material, direct labor and overhead, and we try to produce a unit and we see that how much input did we need um, or have we used to produce a certain uh, amount of output. So we use input and output to come up with the estimated cost. So that's the industrial engineering approach. And now this is good when you don't have a past data available or when you're trying to make a significant changes in your product, which is, uh, you know, for which the data is not available in the market as well. However, you know, it comes with some shortcomings because the industrial engineering may not have as much expertise in the, in the business side or calculating the cost. So it may, we end up estimating the wrong cost. So that's a possibility. The next method is the account analysis method. And now account analysis method is used where we have a simple production environment. Simple production environment, we use the experienced supervisors or managers in the factory, and we, and we ask them to analyze accounts. And, we try, you know, and they are the people who are trying to find out what is variable cost and what is the fixed cost. So they analyze each account and determine the variable and fixed cost. So if you have seen my video related to variable and fixed cost or cost behavior, you have noticed that that variable cost varies with the activity level. So the more units you produce, the higher is going to be your variable cost within a relevant range, right? And same as with the fixed cost, fixed cost stays constant. So what they do is they analyze. So if they are analyzing rent for, you know, last 10 months and they, you know, and they look at the account, they're like, okay, $10,000 rent, $10,000 rent, $10,000 they can come up, oh, this is a fixed cost or can be considered as a fixed cost. Then they go and they analyze another account, with, let's say direct material, and they were like, oh, we were using you know, 5,000 pounds of material when we produce that many units. Now we are using 10,000 pounds or now we're using 100,000 pounds. So they will analyze and they will see that their cost is varying based on the amount they are using. So if that's the case, they put it in, uh, put it in, in the variable uh, category. So they analyze each account and to determine which one is the variable cost and which one is the fix. Now the drawback of this is it's very time consuming, you know, analyzing this and you may end up making mistake if, if it's a mixed cost category. So for example, um, the electricity bill, because it has a, a fixed portion, it has a fixed taxes and, you know, the city taxes and other taxes included. And then uh, based on the kilowatt usage, you are, uh, um, cost of your electricity bill may go up or down. So, you know, to, so stuff like that is hard to separate out. So they may end up making mistakes. It, it's not an uh, accurate method to calculate or estimate the cost. Now the next method is the scatter plot method. In a scatter plot method, we analyze the data from past and we try to find out the trend of the data. And then based on that, we estimate the cost for the future. So if you can see here on the right hand side, uh, data points are given here, uh, the activity level 4,000, 2,000, 3,000. So they are not arranged in an order. And then their respective costs of producing 4,000, 2,000, 3,000, and so on and so forth units. This is provided. So we plot that data. So the data is plotted here. So here, this is 10,000 units. At 10,000 units, 
the cost is 285,000 in this case. So it's somewhere around here, 285,000, right? At 4,000 units, the cost is 170,000. So at 4,000 units, the cost is around 170,000, somewhere here, right? So we estimated um, that data and we plot that data. Now, once the data is plotted, we try to draw a line which cross at least one of the data points, right? And we try to minimize the distances between those points and, uh, and, and, the, and the data points. Now, this is not a foolproof method. This is not 100%. This is just an observation. And we try to see that how the data is flowing. Now, when the data is spread, you know, more and more, it becomes hard to determine whether the cost is, uh, you know, is going up or cost is, is going down or, you know, um, it's hard to predict the exact pattern of the cost, you know, how the cost is behaving when the data points um, disperse everywhere. So next we move on to the high-low method. The high-low method uses the highest and the lowest level of the data points. So in the previous uh, method, when we were using the scatter plot method, we were minimizing the distances, but this line was still not accurate, right? Whereas in a high-low method, we use only the highest and lowest level of the data point, which makes this method even at least, at least effective because here at least the line was crossing from one of the middle points right here. But in high-low method, it was only crossing the, the last one right here because the, the data points, the highest data point is the, and the lowest data points are below most of the points. So this is not the accurate representation of the cost. If there is an accurate representation, it should be something like this, which crosses this line through at least half of those points. So the high-low method discussion is provided in another video where I calculate the, uh, the um, variable cost per unit, the fixed cost, and I estimate the total cost using the high-low method. Please watch that video. Next, we move on to the least square regression method. Now the same data is used to estimate the least square regression method. You can see here on the right hand side, the table is provided. Now least square regression method is the most accurate method to estimate or predict the cost equation. Now what it does is, this, these are the errors right here, as you see here. And in the least square regression method, the line that crosses, it minimizes the deviation, the square deviation between those residuals or error terms and the regression line. Now this blue line is a regression line and this distance between those data points, there are three above and there are three below and there's some right on the line. The D square regression line tries to minimize the squared deviation what does it mean? It means if you take a square of all the data points above the line and takes the square of all the data points below the line and you subtract them from each other, you will get a zero, a perfect zero. This is the most accurate way to estimate the regression line. Now, regression line can be estimated using different methods. If you have one independent variable, we use simple regression line. The equation of simple regression line looks like same as the equation of line when we use slope. Y equals to mx plus b, as you can see here. The simple regression line is y equals to a plus bx, where a is a fixed cost, plus b, b is your variable cost per unit, and x x is your number of units. So that's simple regression. In a multiple regression, when we have multiple independent variables, so x1 and x2 are our independent variable. When we have multiple independent variable, we use multiple regression. 
So in a simple regression, we have one dependent variable. Y is a dependent variable. Y is your Y axis because your cost is dependent on your units. The more units you produce, the more is going to be your cost. That's why it's a dependent variable. It depends on units, right? So simple regression, Y is a dependent variable and X is the number of units which is independent variable because that X drives your cost. In the multiple regression, you can have a multiple independent variable that can drive your cost. So here, X1, X2, X3, X4, up to infinity, you know, depending on how many variables are driving the cost. So if you have a machine that's driving the cost of a factory, then machine hours driving the cost. You know, the variable, maybe labors are also driving the cost and labor hours are driving the cost. If the square feet of a space is driving the cost, then square feet of a space. If the kilowatt usage of electricity driving the cost, then you can add that. So we use multiple regression for that. The further dis discussion of simple regression and multiple regression is provided in my other videos. Thank you for watching my video. Please subscribe my channel for live updates.